there. My name is Vincent Schilling. I am a Native American journalist, photographer, book author, and public speaker that has traveled all over this country covering Native American news topics. Since I've lived in the Hampton Roads community for about 15 years, I thought I'd like to do this show to share the culture that we in the Hampton Roads community have right here in our own backyards. Since I am an enrolled member of the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe and November is Native American Heritage Month, I thought I'd start off by showing you the rich Native American culture of our surrounding areas. Over the past several months, I visited several Native American powwows in the surrounding areas of Virginia and North Carolina. A powwow is a Native American celebration of tradition that includes dancing, drumming, singing, and a gorgeous display of Native American regalia. Remember, it's regalia, not a costume. Did you know that in Virginia there are 11 state-recognized tribes, 5,000 people on tribal registers, and another 45,000 people of Indian ancestry living across Virginia? In fact, two tribes, the Pamunkey and the Mattapanai, have small reservations in King William County, which are the oldest in our country. During this program, we'll talk to some of these great folks, watch traditions as they are happening, and help you to celebrate the beautiful and rich Hampton Roads community and culture. Hey folks, this is Vincent Schilling, and we are here at the Nottaway Indian Tribe of Virginia Powwow. So the reason I'm doing this video is to tell you and let you know what exactly is a powwow. I'm going to hope to answer some of these questions, uh, and maybe you can learn something, and in the process of me doing this, I can learn something too. First of all, I will tell you that a Native American powwow is kind of like a gathering and a celebration to celebrate culture, but also socialize and talk about what you did since last year. And, and generally speaking, powwows are open to the public. So uh, if you hear powwows in your area, it's definitely something you want to do. And ask around and say, hey, what does this mean? What can I learn? Powwows are a great time to watch culture, dancing, drumming, singing, and to check out all the craftsmen around here. So we're going to go around and ask some of these questions and find out some of these things about what exactly is a powwow. Okay, we're going to call our second drum, Nama Wochi Singers, to give us our grand entry. For our veterans, we have the chief of the Nottaway Indian Tribe of Virginia, Chief Lynette Austin, and the Vice Chief Fallen Hurt, Council Member, Judge Austin Elliott. and take a lesson from nature and seek balance in your lives. Sometimes we work too much, sometimes we play too much, sometimes we hate too much. So reflect upon bringing balance to your lives. We are here with uh, Pearl Beamer and she is with Sacred Friends and you can go to the website sacredfriend.org. Um, now, we have here, what, two red-tailed hawks? Yes. And can you tell us about them and what Sacred Friends does? 
Okay, this one here to my left is Wakan. She's a female. She's approximately seven years old now. She has arthritis in both wings and her right leg that makes her not releasable. And over here to my left is Luta. He's the male. And his right wing is amputated at the wrist. And he has one and three fourths wings. He had a high power line. Oh, wow. Now, I noticed the male is a little bit smaller. Yes. Well, when you talk about birds of prey, the male is generally smaller than the female. They're the ones that have need the extra room for all those eggs. Okay. Okay. So, um, what does Sacred Friends do? What was your organization? Sacred Friends is a nonprofit organization that takes in orphan, injured, or sick wildlife, and rehabilitates them, and releases them back into the wild. Okay, great. Uh, if you'd like to donate, go to Sacred Friend without the S dot org. Uh, if you'd like to donate, and can we see you uh, handle one of the the pots? Yes. Pick them up. Okay. So this is Jimmy Beamer, and you're the other partner in crime here with Sacred Friends. So you're now. Uh, you can't just. I'll be honest. I want a pet lacan. I want to like, but you can't do that, right? You have to be very gentle. I mean, you you are a federally licensed wildlife handler. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. So. Yes. If I was to see a hawk in the wild or that's injured, what do I do? What do I do for you guys? Or how, do I contact you? Or do I contact someone? Uh, uh, try and secure the bird safely for for yourself and the bird, okay. and then call us. All right. Now I've seen you let people pet them gently. May I? Yeah. Can you help me? Yes. Just just take your hand and cup it and go go down in the chest real slow. Okay. Now, I wouldn't do this if you weren't here, to be honest with you, because right. I'd be afraid. <laughs> right. And you have a war wound. Can you show us? <laughs> yeah. Um, they got you. <laughs> that wasn't these two. That was a wild one that we were rehabbing. Okay, great. All right, folks, we'll appreciate it. Now, this is not something you usually see at a powwow, right? You don't always see wild animals at powwows. No, I can't recall. Don't. No. Okay, great. No, this, uh, this is something we're trying trying to bring to powwows because it's the Native of American and the wildlife was all always one exactly uh, we we uh, the myth is that we that we pray to them mm -hmm. no we pray to the creator we respect the wild 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 well guys guys thank you so much we are here with pearl and jimmy beamer uh you can check out their website sacred friend Dot .org uh, if you'd like to donate and help them out and let's let's uh, help some wild animals especially what you guys do thank you and very much thank you man. thank you you're welcome thanks how about the phone? there are a lot of great cultural activities and things to experience at a powwow you can watch native traditional dancers and listen to singers and drummers you can also visit one of the many native craft booths you can also learn about native history and watch great demonstrations of native traditions and craftsmanship Okay, I am here with Sarah Origo, and Sarah, what is this that you're wearing? I see this dress, and, and when you walk, it jingles, and uh, can you tell us about it? Well, like you said, it's a jingle dress. Right. Um, they were traditionally made out of rolled up snuff candles. Right, like Copenhagen. Like Copenhagen. Take the lid, okay. Yeah, okay. repurposing is what we call it. Repurposing okay. the lid. So can you tell us about the jingle dance? When, when you are watching a powwow and you see someone dancing, uh, <laughs> What, what, what is it that I'm seeing when I'm watching jingle dancers go by or, well, or in the circle? The, the jingle dance is a dance of healing. Mm -hmm. um, there is a dance of prayer and um, it originated up in Canada. Well, why are you here? Why do you like power? All right, I love power. Um, I've been dancing my entire life. Um, I'm Sack and Fox from, actually from Oklahoma. Oh, I like Jim Thorpe. Yeah, Jim Thorpe. Yeah. You actually know the Sack and Fox. So, um, yeah, but my grandfather, who was native, retired from Fort Lee, Virginia, so that's why we're here. And um, I've been powwowing since before I was born. Okay, we're here with Harold Caldwell, who is Rovan. Now, can you tell me? Can you tell us what kind of dancer you are and about your regalia that you're wearing? I'm a northern traditional dancer. Uh, this is um, in a northern style, and this is from my, my grandpa's people, who is uh, Grovan. And um, the Grovan people, the traditional way that they call themselves is Aa Ninin, which means white clay people. Um, I myself is uh, Muscogee, um, and my tribal town is from Tama, which is down in uh, southern Georgia. But I dance northern traditional. Um, so what uh, you got? What is in your so, hands? Um, well, this is actually from my Muscogee tradition of a stickball game, and um, you know the stickball game is very sacred. Some people dance with these as a symbol of you know strength and. And 
uh, and power and and uh, so uh, and renewal. And so that's the stick ball game here. This is um, a horse dancing stick, and this is from that this is for the horse medicine. And this is actually um, this was actually given to me by my grandpa. Okay. My regalia here is in a grove on style, and um, the mirrors everything is leather and. Um, the mirrors um, is always supposed to protect you and to reflect anything back, um, anything that's thrown bad at you. It's okay. supposed to be reflected back at you. Well, they did catch me in the eye at one point. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> so it did throw me back for a <laughs> second. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what the beating of the mirrors okay. are. And I have a medicine shield also. Um, so anything bad, to throw it back to them. And also, it's supposed to be medicine for yourself to look yourself in the mirror so that change can come. So, and now this on your back here. I'd love to ask you about your bustle. Yeah, what's a good bustle? Is a butterfly bustle? Turn around. Turn around if you don't mind. Yeah, so, we see. so it's supposed to look like a butterfly when you think Oh, wow, and, yeah. And, and it's supposed to collapse in and out to look okay. like a butterfly. So they're different. Okay. So everything pretty much um, has a has a, has a meaning. Yeah, definitely. Has a meaning. Well, you know, in the meaning of when we were doing this video, I saw your mirror reflection hit the lens. Oh. So, no, no, that's good. So, if anybody out there is watching and you have not a good intention, he's going to knock you back. <laughs> Harold, thanks so much. Appreciate it, brother. Awesome. I am here with Laverne Green from Norfolk, Virginia, uh, William Corpru from Virginia Beach, and Sophia Mueller from Germany. So fantastic, that's great. Um, so is this your guys' first time at a powwow? Yes. yes. Okay, so Laverne, you first, what'd you think? I just thought it was wonderful. It was quite an experience mm -hmm. to be here today. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. Uh, William, what, what did you think? I enjoyed it. Sophia, what'd you think? All the way from Germany, how neat, huh? Yes, it's very interesting and so fun in here. <laughs> Yeah, so nice people. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Nice. At the end of a great day, we are here with Chief Lynette Alston of the Nottaway Indian Tribe of Virginia. And uh, this was a spectacular powwow, but I'd like to ask you, and what is the importance of people coming to a powwow, in your words? Just being together. It's just a wonderful time for Native people to get together and, and have camaraderie and fellowship and friendship. But it goes beyond just Native. It goes to everyone because that way people learn about each other so having a powwow really turns into an educational event a cultural event a ceremonial event and just a good time together yeah can you tell us a little bit about this amazing and impressive regalia that you're wearing okay it's a uh, miss nolan traditional uh, outfit my uh, some of the family and friends uh, helped me make it over it's a 15 year period and one thing special about it is that a lot of the persons who created the uh, my regalia are no longer here. Men's Northern Traditional is a warrior dance uh, it essentially uh, I, I if I'm not mistaken is essentially do a dance in, in the sense of preparation for battle. Yeah so uh, hunting the prey, uh, stalking an enemy or again out on a hunt so again in every dance it has its own story. And uh, again, that's pretty much the basis of it. Right. And I know anybody's watching, uh, you may think this, if I were to see Keith Anderson coming over the hill, I would be like this, running the other direction about a thousand miles an hour. Just got to take. So Miss Indian, North Carolina, 2013-14, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, so what is Miss Indian, North Carolina? <laughs> It's just a, basically an ambassador for the Native Americans of North Carolina. Um, a big representation, especially for the younger women, just um, show, giving, providing them an example of how you should come up in the arena and how you should be. Congratulations, Olivia. That is fantastic. Good for you for representing role models. Thank you. All right. <laughs> we are here with Deborah Littlewing Moore. She is Pamunkey and CEO of the Intertribal Women's Circle. Uh, enjoying the powwow today? Absolutely. Absolutely. What a huge family gathering this is every year. I, I'm so excited to be here today. And the turnout is, is crazy. It's beautiful. And all these babies. And, and there is a lot of babies today. I didn't know. Say, what is it you have here as part of this crown that you have on and these Southern medallions? Um, this line here is a family line. Um, there's a story to it. Um, they're the Southern Hearts. Okay. And these are jaguar minks that I got in Alaska when I lived there. Oh, okay. So the Thunderbird represents my mother, and the Magnolia represents my grandmother. And these little uh, discs here are from off of one of her Sunday best dresses. I know for me, I'm honored that I was asked to dance Southern Traditional. It was a huge honor.
I think I was 30 years old when I started dancing at the powwows. And up till that point, I was the tribal dancer within my tribe. So. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, great. Well, thanks you so much, Deborah. Appreciate it. I do have one last question. Uh, what type of regalia is this you have on your phone? Is that the Samsung? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it's nice. To, can we look up traditional and so on? Deborah Little Wing Moore. <laughs> we are here with Mr. Rodney Atkins. Who, and Mr. Atkins, you are a member of the Chickahominy tribe. Uh, beautiful powwow today. So far, yeah. Yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous weather. Right. Yeah. No rain. So, can you tell us about what you're wearing here and what style of dance you, you do? Well, I'm wearing, uh, as a matter of fact, day it's first time for 10 years. So. It, it's some um, uh, congratulations just coming back out but yeah uh, as you see the thunderbird up here uh, i've always through to all the time i started when i was 13 years old dancing always used the thunderbird as my symbol traditional dancer yeah so what do you feel when you're dancing out there in the powwow circle it's all about the spirit uh it's, it's all spirit i i don't I, I prefer to just go from the heart i respect that we're here with Martin Saniga. You are Saponi Parsons County, and uh, so how are you enjoying the powwow today? It's not bad. It's it's bigger than I expected to be down here. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. yeah. So I, I see that you have this traditional regalia on, including this with porcupine quilt. So can you tell us about what you have on your head? What I've got on is uh, what's commonly called a roach now, mm -hmm. and it's uh, porcupine guard hair. So it's not the spiky. It's the, for lack of a better term, fluffy part of a porcupine, if that exists. And then you've got uh, rows of deer hair that are dyed on the inside, on the outside. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty standard for a lot of men's uh, styles, whether it's grass, uh, traditional, fancy, mm -hmm. uh, southern straight, stuff like that. It's a pretty common item. Right, a common item for ma uh, male native dancers that are in the, that you'll see in the powwow circuit of dancing around in, in different styles. Uh, what style do you dance? Uh, grass. Grass dance. We are here with Danny Garneau, and Danny, you are Oglala Lakota. Now, what? Now, Danny, what style of, of regalia do you have on, and what type of men's dancer are you? This outfit belongs to that of a grass dancer, and we got two stories of where we get the grass dance from. One story tells of a little boy whose legs were not like everybody else's, and how the Creator came to this little boy and gave him the power to heal him, to heal him through this song. And the other story is how when our people moved camps, since my people lived on the plains, when we moved our camps, the grass dancers were chosen to come out and perform the grass dance in order to knock down the tall grasses to prepare a place for our people to put up our teepees. That's wonderful. And and now I've, I've heard oftentimes, I want to make sure I'm correct when I say this, that the part of the regalia, this part that's flowing, is supposed to kind of emulate that grass. like the Yes, okay. yes it's supposed to emulate the grass because that's where the, we get the stories from. Okay, I'm here with Lewis Campbell, who is Lumbee and Blackfoot. Uh, so, Lewis, what type of dancer are you here with, at the Chickahominy Pow Wow? Northern traditional dancer. Okay. Now, I see some northern traditional dancers who have maybe a different type of headdress. Some wear, you know, brooches, and then I see what you have here. Can you tell us about what you're wearing here? It's called either a mop top or a mandan. It's from the Dog Soldier Society out of uh, the Cheyenne Dog Soldiers. Okay. And what, what does it signify? Because this is really impressive. I don't know how you would make it, to be honest with you. Uh, the dog soldiers, they wore these to intimidate other dancers, I mean other soldiers. What they would do is they'd stick themselves to the ground and uh, they would not move until the battle was over. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. That would scare me. <laughs> I'd be intimidated. So uh, I see all this other regalia you have as well as this very impressive stuff here in the back. Uh, now, I notice that your um, bustle has two rows of feathers. Correct. Um, you can have one, two, three. It doesn't matter. It's just a lot of contemporary dancers have two to three um, bustles, like inner layer, you know, third layer, whatever. We are at the Maharan Pow Wow in North Carolina, uh, which took place October 4th, 5th, and 6th. Uh, this year is in October. And um, the Maharan Pow is kind of interesting because it's actually kind of an Iroquoian base, which is, I am Mohawk, so I am part of the Iroquois Confederacy. And uh, some of the influence you'll see in some of the other Virginia tribes uh, are Powhatan based. We're here with Chief Wayne Brown. Uh, Chief Brown, you are chief of the Maharan Nation, and it's, I'm also Iroquoian. Uh, something we'd have in common, uh, that I've been to a lot of powwows in Virginia that seem a little bit different. Can you tell me about that? Yes, uh, as Iroquois people, our dances are a little different. Uh, most of the natives from this area, as well as Virginia, were not Iroquois. 
the only Iroquois nations were the Nottaway and the Maherns and the Tuscaroras. So our dances are a little different, and what we decided to do here was to integrate, since we're all brothers, uh, native brothers, we decided that we wanted to do the Iroquois social dance as well as the powwow dances. But I wanted to bring here to the people so that they can start understanding that native people were a little different, but yet we're all the same because we believe that we all came from Mother Earth. Oh, I love that. I love that. After an amazing day at the Maharan powwow, with traditional Iroquois dances and a few special guests to include a drum group from the Navajo Nation and a performance by the award-winning artist Pirafe, I was thrilled to end my day with a conversation with fellow Mohawk from Aquasasne, Mike Jock. He told me what it was to be Mohawk and about the love and respect the native community had for his mother. What a great way to end my journey. My mother was Kalohia Nolo and uh, she was uh, Ann Jock. Uh of the uh, Ganyankahaga people in Akwazasne, and she was a, a Bear Clan mother and a very well respected woman. Every place I go, people talk about her, and, and, and it makes me feel good. And, and, and we are the carriers of the medicine people. I love that. I love that. And that's, and, and that, and that's what we do we f make people feel good and come back in, in with unity and let and, and let's get let's get strong again because things have been getting quiet while well, Indian country is still alive Thanks for watching. We'll we'll see you soon.